I want to show you, I want to show you one last thing that combines all of the things that I've been talking about. You got the, the Drive PX with the ability to connect all these different high-speed cameras. It brings it into the Drive PX computing platform powered by TX1. TX1 then figures out the environment around it. And then from there, we can apply deep learning, computer vision, and other computer vision techniques to better become situational aware. The technology we call is surround vision. Surround view is taking multiple cameras and stitching them together. Surround vision is being able to look at and understand, see and understand the environment around the car. To show you what surround vision can do, uh, Jim is going to uh, give us a demonstration of this incredible technology. Jim? Thanks, Jensen. OK, so the first thing we're going to show you is the simulator that we've developed, um, which is what you see on the screen right now, which is a photorealistic simulation environment for testing computer vision algorithms. So one of the challenges with computer vision is that it requires real cameras and rigging up of, of situations and cameras on vehicles and other things if you want to test real autonomous uh, driving types of algorithms. And a lot of times that, that configuration is challenging. So what we thought is, why not do it in a virtual world, especially since we have such expertise in realistic rendering and photorealistic rendering and physically based rendering, we developed this simulator to, uh, to, to, to do exactly that. So this is a, a parking garage that's based on the parking garage at NVIDIA headquarters in uh, Santa Clara, California. And Curtis here is going to drive the car around this environment to give you a, a feeling for what the space looks like. Now remember, this is completely real-time 3D. This particular parking garage is real. It is really our parking garage. I think the, the sum of the cars, for example, the Ferrari 430, <laughs> which is, there's quite a few Ferraris. Maybe we're, lots of Audis. And so, so um, uh, this entire environment is designed in 3D and everything is rendered in real time. As you know, we, we simulate as a company. Simulation is deeply rooted inside the culture of our company. We simulate obsessively so that our chips are perfect. We simulate obsessively so that our algorithms are perfect. So it stands to reason that we would create a simulation platform for autonomous driving. So we can uh, reconfigure this environment as well. This is not a static environment. So in addition to driving through it, Curtis can change the configuration of which spots are filled and what cars are in the spots. And indeed, we can actually even just fly around in the environment um, fully real time and, and click on the spots and reconfigure them to different vehicles or, or even make the spot completely empty or whatever you'd like. OK. So this is the first part, which is the, the, the actual um, simulator. So another component of the simulator <clears throat> is it's not enough just to render this viewpoint, but we also need to generate inputs that would run into computer vision algorithms, and that means we've got to attach cameras to this car. So let's transition to the other visualization. So what this is showing here, the center image is running on the same machine that you were just, that you were just seeing. The, the four images around it represent the views from different cameras that are attached in this virtual environment. And those, those cameras are actually being rendered on separate machines. They're doing real physically based fisheye renderings. Uh, fisheye cameras are very common on, uh, in automotive platforms. And then those, uh, and they're fully synchronized with each other. So they follow the car. There's a camera in front, one on each side, and one in the rear. Now imagine the power of this platform as a result. I mean, he's, he really has, there are five high-end NVIDIA GPUs simulating this virtual environment. The beautiful thing about this is now we can change the virtual environment with great ease. Uh, we can change the environment around it. We can change the lighting around it. We can change, obviously, the geometry and all the obstacles around it. And this particular simulator behaves physically accurate. The rate of the wheel turning and how quickly the car is moving is physically simulated. Uh, when a car, well, we could, we could collide against another car. Every single car has collision detection. And so everything, <laughs> okay, notice, notice the triangle, the, the, the two objects don't go into each other. It's, there's collision detection involved. And these five GPUs are rendering the five views that you're currently seeing. And these views are then translated into video input 
that the Drive PX will now use for recognizing the environment around it. That's right. So <clears throat> the next part of the demo, what we're going to show is given this, this, uh, this data that the simulated environment generates, um, which is the fisheye input camera uh, uh, inputs, um, we're going to show some computer vision algorithms on which we'll base the Drive PX uh, uh, features. So what this visualization shows on the left, we've got the four camera inputs. Those are generated in the simulated environment. It'll look familiar to you. It's, it's the, uh, the parking garage we just showed. On the right is the, uh, one of the surround vision visualization modes we have, which takes the four camera inputs and warps them to show a simulated top-down view. I'll let this run a little bit, and you can see as we move around through this environment, the camera's updating as you'd expect. Um, so one of the first visualizations I'm going to show is what's called feature tracking. So this is a computer vision algorithm that basically identifies salient points in the images. So this is all just in 2D. And what it does is basically tracks them from frame to frame. So this is an important building block in doing computer vision because it allows you to actually um, know that a point from one frame to the next, uh, how it moves from frame to frame. So what we can do if we have that visual, uh, once we've done the, 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 the actual frame, um, the actual feature tracking in the 2D, is we now, can switch to... Jim, don't switch yet. Okay. So what you saw earlier, the previous, the previous set of scenes were being generated on the simulator. All of the images you're looking at now are what is seen by Tegra X1. These are being processed on the Drive PX. Does that make sense? Previously, the previous scene was a simulation of the parking garage. Now, that simulation turns into video input, and you're now looking at all of the data that's being processed on the Drive PX. That's right. So we can advance it a little bit more and then switch into what we call point cloud mode. So what this shows is given the features that are tracked in the 2D images, what this does is in real time, using CUDA, uh, based on the, both those features and their positions in the images and the poses of the cameras, which we determine algorithmically, reconstruct the 3D positions of the actual geometry in the scene. So if I pause it for a second, like right here, for example, I can actually rotate around this in real time, and it gives you a sense for the points in the scene and the structure of the environment around the car. So we can play it here a little bit more. So this is an important building block because what we need is for the, 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 the algorithms that happen after this, the real sort of intelligence and reasoning about the surroundings types of algorithms, we need them to know the structure of the environment so we can, they can navigate, they can make decisions about where to go. And so um, the first step to that is, is, is generating the actual, uh, a sense for the actual 3D geometry in the scene around the vehicle. And so what you're looking at here, number one, we're modeling the environment. We're also understanding what we see. And now, as you saw, we're doing pathfinding. OK, go ahead. OK, yeah, and if you're curious here, the colors, by the way, are basically indicate which camera those points came from originally. But they're all in the same 3D space. OK, so that's what's called structure for motion. It's a very important fundamental algorithm in computer vision. And then the last step, the, uh, the last thing we're going to show everyone is basically putting all of these pieces together. So what we see here, the, 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 the image on the left is the simulator image that we showed initially. It's the same environment. Um, what we showed earlier when we were showing the simulator was actually being driven by a human. That we were driving around just using a keyboard. Um, now what we're doing is we're taking the images that we're generating by those five servers that Jensen talked about, sending them actually over a network to a client, which is doing the, the computer vision processing, analyzing the images, doing structure from motion, and then sending, driving commands back to the server to find a path through this environment which finds a parking spot, a valid parking spot, and, and parks in it without colliding with any obstacles. The processing for reconstructing the 3D environment, the, creating the point cloud, and the pathfinding is run on the car. Okay? The only thing that's being done in the server is the simulation and generating what is essentially virtual video input that comes into DrivePX. Exactly. So let's go ahead and uh, try to find a parking spot. So what you see on the, on the right and the, the right side of the right are, again, those, those images. And that's the only information that 
the pathfinding algorithms and the computer vision algorithms have about the, about the world around them. Right? So the, the server generates those, the simulator generates those, um, some reasoning is done on those images, 3D points are, are generated so we understand the structure of the environment around the car, and then we can determine where to go and where not to go based on that 3D structure. Now they tell me, I ask them why, why it's going so slow, they tell me that's five miles per hour. <laughs> and, and it seems slower than five miles per hour, and they, they accuse me of never having experienced five miles per hour, which, which probably is true. Yeah, this is how you're supposed to drive I, in I'm not sure that I've ever experienced, yeah. Well, apparently that's the, that's the speed limit in our garage. So another so, visualization we have here, um, if you could enable the obstacle map, is something we call an obstacle map. This is um, showing basically, given the 3D points that we showed earlier from the point cloud, we can actually um, do some further reasoning about that, where we determine which of those points correspond with obstacles, things which are undrivable, and which ones are not, which ones are things like the floor, the ceiling of the parking garage, things which are not obstacles and so can be driven on. And so what we see here is, as the car navigates the space, the green line is the path that the car is following. The red points, um, you know, areas of more red density are areas with more obstacles in them, and so they're places that we cannot go. Um, and additionally, one visualization you're about to see now, because we found a parking spot here, you see there's an empty parking spot on the right, it's determined that it's a parking spot, because there's two sets of criteria that we need for determining if something is parkable. One is that it's, it has no obstacles in it, and the second is that it is actually a parking spot, right? We don't want to park in the middle of the garage where there's no parking spot. And so a parking um, command and, and a parking algorithm is executed, and we successfully park in the parking spot. No. This is a, this, from, the, from the car's perspective, this is a parking lot it has never seen before. This is from a car's perspective, this is a parking lot it has never seen before. These are, we could change the objects so the 3D space around it can always be new. And it figures out the environment, it becomes aware within it, and you saw earlier we could train the network to detect a person, a kid, so when they see a kid, when the car sees a kid, it would stop let the kid get, a, get away, and then continue its pathfinding. Now, of course, if we could do this part, the next part is super easy. Your phone, literally, we got out of the car just now, right? Right when we got to the entry of the parking lot, it meanders and finds its way through. It's never seen this environment before. It meanders, and it doesn't matter what it is, it'll meander and eventually find a legal parking lot, parking space. When you're done with dinner, you say, come back to me, retrieve the car. It becomes the auto valet. That car now meanders back out, um, path finds, and eventually gets back to, uh, gets back to, uh, gets back to the driver. Okay. So what you saw, what you saw, is a great deal of technology that we just put together in the last several weeks. It starts with Drive PX, Drive PX powered by Tegra X1. All these different cameras are coming into it. From those cameras, we understand the environment. We become situation aware using deep learning, deep neural net, computer vision techniques. We can classify all kinds of objects around it. And because there's a supercomputer essentially in TX1, we could use it for reconstructing the 3D space. We can use it for pathfinding. And as a result, start on the road, on the journey to autonomous driving cars. We announced three things today. One, Tegra X1, the world's first one teraflops mobile superchip. Its performance is necessary to power our two other announcements. Drive CX, the most advanced digital cockpit computer, allows us to drive multiple displays with computer graphics powered by the Maxwell GPU so that the graphics could be rich, beautiful, and also very high resolution. We showed you a material rendering technology that is embedded within our Drive Studio software stack. We also showed you Drive PX, the second computer inside your car, which will become the platform by which autonomous driving, autopilot computers, autopilot cars will be built upon. Thank you very much for joining us. Please uh, enjoy all of our hands-on demonstrations. And uh, congratulations for the NVIDIA team for pulling this off. Thank you very much.